Hey there, Brett with Solarola out on the Pike Chain of Lakes near Iron River, Wisconsin. We're beginning to fulfill our dream of creating a solar-powered electric pontoon. So as you know, we are in competition with Zach and Jesse of Now You Know. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries. So we're really excited to be working with a big battery on this, light leaf solar panels. We've, so basically two of these large panels, 1600 watts, that's going to be plenty to pull sunshine into our batteries out there on the lake. Hey there, I'm just cleaning up this uh, mating surface where the motor used to hit the um, kind of the rest of the outboard there. Here's where we're going to run spacers up to our adapter plate. And then our motor is going to sit on that and send its coupler straight through to the drive shaft. So I've got to get this pattern correctly relative to this shaft so I can um, draw it out over here on my plate. So, I don't know if you can see, but I have the, the AC motor um, kind of dimensioned out. I use a, I use a caliper, you know, it, it works really well. If you set your caliper tight, and then you kind of drag it, you can get nice perfect lines. Just punched my first hole in the adapter plate that's going to allow us to put the electric motor onto that outboard. And I should be able to get to the point today, hopefully, where I get my spacers done, I get the plate all drilled out, and then I can order my bolts. So I'm going to try to get some hardened um, 10 millimeter bolts to make sure and, and keep this thing super sturdy. The adapter plate is done. It's a little bit more than an adapter plate. There's some pretty serious spacers in there. That's all aluminum. I gave it a paint, a little bit of paint, but aluminum plate and aluminum spacers, like one inch spacers. I had to put a 3 8 hole through them. And then this will go down through the top part of the outboard. Here's our coupler. Couples on to the inch and an eighth shaft coming out of this motor. And then I pressed in a short portion of the um, female spline into that coupler. So I had to machine it down slightly. I pressed it in. I welded, tack welded it good so it'll never move. I'm within about, uh, I'm 55 thousandths off. So that's acceptable. That shouldn't give me a lot of vibration or anything. And yeah, so this is ready to set down on the motor. I just went through the lower unit on the Mercury motor. I realized at one point, we don't need a mechanical reverse on the outboard motor because we're not running a gas motor which only spins in one direction. We're using an electric motor and with a flip of a switch we can go from forward to reverse on our electric motor. So what we want is we want a pretty much direct connection, a lot less moving parts, a lot less things to fail. In fact, some of these older motors, I'm really happy to eliminate some parts because they look a little marginal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna weld this solid. So the weak point of the system then becomes the blades on the prop. And what's cool about this being solid is when we slow down, we're also going to get regen. Because as the boat's moving through the water, not under power, the water's going to want to spin that backwards. If you had your pontoon boat in a river and you had it hooked up to the shore, that water would basically charge your batteries. Kind of a cool idea, like a hydro power, right? So I've got to try to keep from getting any anything on my gears and I'm putting it in the press because I want to make sure that this shaft is square to this. If I weld on one side, it's going to cool and it's going to tip this, this uh, gear up. So I'm going to put pressure on it and then I'm going to weld it. So here I go. We have our 
AC50 with our Curtis 1238 7501 controller running our 1967 Mercury 110 horse Tower of Power. So pretty excited. Took a little bit of doing, took a little bit of programming, took a little bit of help from uh, some good friends. We always have Michael Bream on the other end, ready to help, great guy. And another Michael um, from Big Battery, their lead engineer, super cool dude. Um, happy to have met him. He fired me off some software that I needed to get into this controller and some plugs and stuff. So quite, quite a community surrounding us and pretty excited to use the Big Battery batteries. We've been pulling some power out of them. Nothing super significant just yet. We're just kind of running the motor and making sure our controller is set up correctly and all our protections are set up. And so we're pretty excited to get these things in. So first stage is kind of to collect all our parts. It's kind of how I roll, is get all the parts I need. I like to know that I have everything right away. And I also like to know that everything is compatible. So I like to get all the parts together. So that's what we did. Next stage was to get the motor together. So I am building this to try to really get this thing moving so that we can do some of that fun stuff that the kids want to do and that I want to do sometimes, Kira wants to do. So that's why we went with as big a batteries and as many batteries. However, we did try to keep the voltage down so that if someone was interested in either, um, you know, consulting us for a build or doing it themselves, keep the voltage down. It's always safer, it's always easier. And, uh, and there's enough there to, to give you a 50, you know, 75 horse, which electrically is pretty good. So this motor ran about, I think it redlines at about 6,000 RPM, 6,250 or something, maybe 6,500, but this AC motor will do 8,000. So that's just gonna give us more speed. And of course with an electric motor, we have torque, max torque all along that curve. Excited to see the, the big battery batteries. So we are using the AC50 coupled to a, a 1238 Curtis 7501, max amp about 550 amps. So these batteries will pull out, put out 150 amps continuous. So we're gonna be using four of these. So we did get five, but the weight is getting a little much. So we're gonna use one of our extra batteries for our tractor, so tune into that. That's gonna be pretty cool to get that Massey, get one of these in that Massey Harris. And then that vehicle will very likely um, go up for sale. I really enjoy building these tractors. We've got it really dialed in. So with a, with a big battery battery in there, it's ready for someone to jump in and start working it. So these will, as I said, put out 150 amps. Continuous times four is 600. With the controller putting out 550 max, we might even back that off to 500 so we give ourselves a nice amount of headroom. We don't ever have to worry about loading them too hard and then the battery shutting down or anything like that. We don't want to ever work anything to its maximum. As I mentioned, that thing will do 8,000 RPM, but I'll probably limit it to seven, even 6,500. There's just no need to push everything to the max and we want things to last, that's important here. All right, so let's fire it up and just give it a little bit of a spin. I do have some uh, backlash and stuff like that to adjust in the gears. There's a, a bevel gear that comes down off the main shaft and then uh, goes out on a 90 to the propeller. So those two gears need to be meshed just right so we don't get any kind of premature wear. 80, 90 gear lube in the box. So you might hear a little bit of noise with that as we spin it but that's uh, just because we have to do a little bit of adjustment there. So let's fire it up. Lots of torque there. That's pretty much it. So pretty excited to get this thing in the water. Kira has been sanding on the deck um, with her dad Sig, who is in town with her mom Kay. Great to have those guys, always supportive, always helping us with our projects. So um, we're rolling. We don't know where Zach and Jesse are in the competition and quite frankly, we don't care because we're moving as fast as we can, which has felt a little bit slow, but here we are with the motor ready to go. Um, the deck on the pontoon is all sanded, ready to be painted. The paint should be here today. It's raining, however, so maybe that'll be a, a weekend gig or even next week. But once that motor goes on, and the panels get set up, we're ready to get this thing on the water. So we're gonna to try to get it in a slip on the Pike Chain of Lakes, which is a series, of, a beautiful series of lakes here in Northern Wisconsin, and be able to really test out the pontoon and have a lot of wonderful um, summer slash fall days as this project somewhat drags on. 
So pretty excited now for phase three, which is putting it all together. Stay tuned.